Hi guys, welcome to the video and welcome to my new haircut. Uh, I personally think it needs to be even shorter. It's actually receding hairline was coming back and it was, it was getting a little bit unmessy. So I've actually shortened it. I think it needs to go a bit shorter, but you know, what do you think? Let me know. But the point is, what I want to talk to you today about is balancing technique improvement with relaxation. Because this is a very, I think, very important topic at the moment. So especially when we're athletes, we want to improve so much and we want to do what we can um, to improve by 0.01 of a second that helps improve us. And so we'll go down to even great detail in our race, our technique, our running technique, our block start technique. And we'll go even to down to try and create that perfection that we think we need to get that great race. And this is the problem that a lot of athletes come because what comes with technique improvement comes a lot of thinking, a lot of obsession, obsessing about it, about the smallest possible things that if we actually, we start to think like if we can improve even a small amount in that area, we can bring our times down. Now, this is a dangerous way to think about, okay, and it's, if you're going to think that way, you're going to have to have the extreme confidence in yourself to be able to apply that technique and to be able to improve upon that technique and fail in that technique again and again and again without have it having a negative effect on you mentally. We can get obsessed about it. And if we start to not be able to Im impose that technique or that technique change on our, on our training, on our sprinting, then we can start to think negatively about ourselves. And this is very dangerous because when we think negatively about ourselves, how is that going to help us improve as an athlete? How is that going to help us relax for sprinting? We need to have that confidence in ourselves to actually improve the, the improve in whatever technique change that we do. Then, but there needs to be that balance at the same time as well. If you're overly obsessed about technique, then you're thinking too much. And if you're overly obsessed about technique, you might start to think about that technique change in the race. And when you're thinking in a race, that is to the total antithesis of sport performance, of optimal sport performance, because your body's not working naturally. And this is massive. So finding the balance between technique change of improving, which is totally valid in a way, to and while keeping that relaxation is massively important and what I do is for number one is to if you're going to have change anything in the technique of your race whether it's a block start maybe it's a certain way that you're running you've got to have the extreme confidence in yourself to make sure that it doesn't have a negative impact on you when you fail at it yet again and again and again that's massive so you know you've got to have the confidence that you're going to do it you're going to successfully incorporate that technique change into your race into your training You've got to have that, in, 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 that in belief in yourself and you cannot prevent it from be, uh, having a neg negative effect on you when you start to um, lose, lose that confidence in yourself because you cannot do it. If you start to lose confidence in trying to actually impose that technique on you, then you won't get it right. The chance of you getting that technique right goes down to zero and you start to do other things wrong and thinking becomes part of your sprinting. And when thinking comes, becomes part of your sprinting, you cannot, you cannot sprint well. When thinking becomes part of your sprinting, you cannot think well or sprint well. It's not possible. So you have to balance it as well. You have to, if you're going to have technique changes, you have to have the confidence in yourself, to have the patience in yourself to fail, 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 fail again without it being negative impact on your body to keep on going. And the second thing as well, is that you've got to make sure that any technique change is done in training. Anything that when you're trying to change in a race, is not you should not be thinking in a race. Basically, you should not be thinking about that technique change in the race. You should not be thinking about trying to do it, that technique change in the race. You should have already practiced it enough in training for you to go out and do it. So it becomes muscle memory. That is massive. Now, it's you've, you, to do that, you've got to practice it in training. Now, what I do with my athletes is specifically I practice blocks with my athletes. And I do technique changes with block athletes. I try to improve athletes out of the blocks. And a lot of the time, because they're quite young, they're just starting out in block starts, I, what I do is I just get them out 
getting used to coming out of the blocks, first of all. So they can actually not think so much. And once they, they do that, I start to get them to visualize before they've even gotten the blocks. If there's something to improve in their block start, I get them to visualize themselves doing that, that change before they get in the blocks. I get them to actually think about, right, you've got this to change. What Visualize right now, before you even get in the blocks, what you're going to do. Visualize yourself doing it and making it easy. And once I say that to them, once you've visualized it, you stop. You take a brief breath, a couple of deep breaths, and then you're called to your marks, and you're in the present moment all from all that point on. You cannot be thinking about that technique change in the blocks, because if you start thinking about that, something else is going to go wrong. Once thinking becomes part of your sprinting, then sport, optimal sports performance ceases. So you need to be able to relax, and relax is when you're actually not thinking in the, in the blocks, and you're actually allowing the body to do its work. And you've got to get confidence to actually, that visualization, you've done it, you have confidence that you're just going to go and do it now but you're not thinking about it when the blocks anyway. You just have the confidence in your own mind that it's going to go well. And once you do that, then more often than not, the athlete does it. The athlete achieves what they wanted to do by a simple technique. So I do that in my training with my athletes. Now, most of the time, if they're new to blocks, I just get them coming out of blocks. I want them to body to move instinctively. I might get them to breathe before they get in the blocks, and then they come out of it. But I don't, I don't give the, a, a, a beginner athlete too much to think about. I get them coming out of the blocks first, getting them used to it, and then I might, as soon as they start to reach a level of comfort in it, in the, what they're doing, then I might change a few things. But only I will only get them to visualize that one small change first before getting in the blocks, and then they clear their mind when they're in the blocks. That's when sports performance happens. And that's how, for me, I start to impose technique changes in there. But again, I say, when they're in the race, they're not thinking of that kind of thing. They're only thinking, their goal is to run the fastest 100 meters, 200, 400 meters of their life. That is what they go, or to win, whichever one it is. But they're not thinking about that little technique change they've got to do. They're not thinking, you cannot do that. To think about, to think is to get tightened up. Simple act. To think is to tighten up. And when you've got the race, you're not thinking. You should have done all the training to get that technique change in, in concrete in your, in your muscle memory so you can do it naturally. And then when you come to the race, you don't have to think about it. And if that technique change isn't done naturally, it's not natural, you shouldn't be thinking about it again in the race. You should be just going out to allow the body to... to uh, to move naturally and to just relax. And the, th the third thing I want to say about uh, technique changes is that you cannot impose them on an athlete that's tight. If an athlete is tight, then you cannot impose technique change. It won't happen because athletes are already thinking in the mind. If they're thinking in the mind, trying to impose technique change on a tight athlete, it doesn't work. So you need to be able to relax the athlete first before you can actually impose that on them. So an athlete that is relaxed can impose a technique change very easily. And it can naturally bring it in there without faltering too much. But an athlete that is tight can't do that. Their mind is too full. And the mind is too full, they're going to be tight. And they're trying to impose a tight, that's possibly going to lead to injury. But it's, it's definitely not going to lead to any kind of, uh, to any improvement in their sprinting. And so finding the balance between, between relaxation and technique change and teaching the athlete a new technique, there has to be that balance there. And it used to, there, there needs to be conditions in place. And normally that condition is relaxation. But relaxation has to do. Remember, the relaxation allows the athlete to move naturally. And once they're in the right state, maybe they can improve that, but they have to move naturally and feel natural when they're sprinting. 
So I hope that video gives you a different perspective on, on kind of actually riding that balance. It's huge right now. As athletes, we can get very obsessed about this and that, that small little thing that will might improve it. Well, athletics and performance isn't like that. As I, I talked about before, how athletes like they broke world records with a rubbish start, with rubbish technique at the start, or what's considered rubbish technique at the start, what's considered a bad start at the start, but still come through and break the world record. It can be done. It does that technique change does is not is not the the be all and end all of your race, and it sh you definitely cannot allow it to be. You definitely cannot allow it to be. It's minute in your race. When you're racing, you cannot be thinking about that thing. So, hope that video gives you a different perspective. Let me know what you think about that, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. Now, if you're looking to have extra help or more assistance in getting relaxed for your sprinting, for your 200 meters or 400 meters, then I highly recommend that you go down to one of my courses. Two courses, there's the full relaxation sequence for sprinters and 400 meter runners, and then there's a starter program as well. You can get the links below in the description, but both will be valuable in helping you incorporate relaxation. One, both contain massage techniques that actually can relax the body that you can do yourself, that take minutes, and that can change your performance and your body on the spot. So take a look at the, both those programs. If you're truly interested in getting relaxed for sprinting and getting the best out of your sprinting ability and your sprinting career, I cannot recommend them enough. Take a look and I'll see you in the next video.